Now we've been loving this year's Razer Blade 18. It's made an amazing work and gaming laptop with its crispy 4K plus display and more power than we've ever seen in a Razer Blade. But Razer have made some questionable choices with the one terabyte Gen 4 SSD and 32 gigabytes of 5,600 RAM. Well, we wanna see how far we can upgrade this blade. So I've bought some new Gen 5 SSDs, some faster 64 gigabyte of 6,400 CSO dim memory. Now, although I wanted to try the 128 gigabyte kit to really test it, sadly, they're still not available. But as soon as I can get hold of some, I will test them and I'll update you. Now, before we start, make sure you have a decent tool set. I always use this iFixit Electronic Essentials Kit. It's not expensive. It has all the tools that I need for the work I do on these laptops. I'll put a link in the description down below uh, for this and all the other equipment we're using so that you can check them out. So I also bought Crucial 64 gigabyte 6400 CSO DIMM kit. I'm using Gen 5 SSDs and I've got my trusty four terabyte SN850X which is a double-sided Gen 4 drive, so I can test to make sure Gen 4s fit fine in the blade. So let's crack this Blade 18 open and start testing. Now, as always, opening raised blades is very easy. I always lay a mouse mat on my desk so that I don't ever scratch these blades because although they are solid, they easily scratch with a bit of grit or something and you push them around on the surface. I also make sure the raised blade is powered down. Please make sure that it's not in sleep, it's properly powered down. And once you've done that, turn it upside down onto the desk mat. From there, grab your T5 driver and unscrew all the screws on the base plate. They're all the same size, so you can just put them all in a pot to keep them safe. Now with all the screws removed, put your nails under the front of the base plate and then slowly bring it up and pull it forward to remove it from those clips at the rear and then lift it away from the razor blade. It is very easy, but don't just roughly yank it off because you will damage the clips. With the cover removed, we now have easy access to all of the components. And first, I'm gonna change the RAM. Now, I'm gonna just show you how I installed this crucial RAM kit, the 6400, but I'm also gonna test it with my Fast Fury 5600 kit to see how that performs against the new kit and against the stock kit to see which is the best value for you. Now, before you start, you need to unplug the battery connector. It has tape over it, but removing the tape will not void your warranty. Use a plastic pry tool and your nail to slide the cable out. This can be a little difficult, but take your time and don't yank on the cable. Next, to get to the RAM, lift off the Mylar cover. This is just stuck on in place with tape. Then it gives us complete access to the RAM slots. Unlock the metal tabs either side of the RAM chip and gently pull it up and out. Repeat the process for the second chip. So let's get our new RAM. There's only one way the RAM will fit into the slot. So you need to line up the notch on the RAM chip to the notch on the slot. Then slide it at a 45 degree angle and push down you'll hear a nice satisfying pop as the locking clips lock into place. Once complete with both chips, stick the Mylar cover back in place. Now I don't wanna bore you by showing each install, but I've tested both the new Crucial 6400 and the Fury 5600. The good news is the Crucial kit works at its rated 6400 speed perfectly, which begs the question, why didn't Razer use a 6400 RAM like other manufacturers? Running IDA64 and Geekbench 6, we can see that the faster RAM gives us a great boost in performance. And even that Kingston 5600 kit is a fair amount faster than the stock 32 gigabyte. So if you want to upgrade the RAM, I would recommend getting the Crucial, unless it's stupidly expensive or not available in your region, then the Kingston Fury 64 gigabyte kit is the best value for money option. So with the RAM complete, if that's what you're interested in doing, plug your battery back in, screw the base plate back on, and you're done. But otherwise, let's now look at the SSDs. Now, Razer do not use heat plates with the SSDs installed on these laptop. Instead, there's a large heat pad for each SSD on the base plate of the laptop to allow it to transfer all the heat away from the SSD to the base. Now, if you only want to add a second drive and just keep the original one terabyte installed, it's as simple as removing the screw on that second bay, sliding in your new SSD into the slot and replacing the screw. For this video though, I want to increase not only the storage, but the speed of the faster drives. So the first thing I wanna do is test my Gen 5 driver in each of these slots. The primary slot where the existing SSD is installed is Gen 5, but the second empty slot is sadly only Gen 4. So with this information, I'm gonna be installing my two terabyte Gen 5 drive as my C drive, and then my fast four terabyte Gen 4 SN850X as my games drive in that secondary slot. The good news with the blade is that both of these slots accepted my double-sided SN850X four terabyte with no issues. I wanna also point out that either slot will load the operating system, 
but because I'm gonna be using a Gen 5 drive for that OS, I'm gonna want that installed in that primary bay. Now you can complete a fresh install, but you will lose all of your data on that original drive, including the drivers, the partitions, and the screen calibration. So I'm gonna actually clone the drive to move all the existing data from my original one terabyte to my new Gen 5 drive. Now, because there's two bays, we can just install it in the second drive and clone straight from one to the other. But if you don't want to open the laptop twice, you can also use a USB-C caddy like the Sabrent, which means I only have to take it apart once. I'm going to clone directly to the Sabrent bay. Cloning the drive is very straightforward. Some drives even come with their own free cloning software. But I'm going to be using AMA today as it's not expensive and it can be used on any drive that's out there. There's going to be a link to it in the description down below. Now, with my cloning software installed, I have two choices. I can clone the entire disk and therefore keep the original Razer respawn partitions, or I can just clone the C drive, which frees up the space from those other Razer partitions themselves. Now, because I'm keeping my original Razer drive, I will just use the C partition for my unit. Now, this is very straightforward. You literally tell the software which partition or drive you want to clone and which SSD you want to move it to, and it does the rest. Now, I've used the two bay method here because I've been in and outside of this laptop multiple times. So once the clone is complete, all I now need to do is remove my original drive. And I always keep my original drive just in case I want to actually sell the laptop again in the future so I can return it to stock. And it's also very handy to have that drive if you ever have a drive failure so you've got a backup. And then once that drive is now taken out, I'm going to use that slot for my spare 4 terabyte s 850 x in that secondary slot, which will then become my games drive. Once my second drive is screwed in place, plug the battery cable back in slide on the base plate and screw down those T5 screws. And that is it. What we now need to do, plug your power adapter back in and boot it up. Now the first time you boot, it does seem like it takes an age, so don't panic. It will take a little while for that Razer logo to appear, but eventually it will boot as normal, except now in Windows Explorer, you can see my two terabyte Gen 5 drive instead of the old fashioned one terabyte that was installed. Now the four terabyte second drive won't be showing yet. We do need to initialize it. To do this, open Disk Manager, and it will pop up and tell you that a new drive is detected. Follow the prompts to initialize and format that drive, and now the drive becomes available. And wow, with this little operation, this Blade 18 now really flies. It was already a fast laptop, but I was always disappointed that they used the slower components in this Razer Blade, unlike the Alienware Aero 51, which out of the gate comes with 6400 RAM and Gen 5 SSDs. Now, if you have any questions, Pop it in the comment section down below and I will certainly get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching.